Welcome back to also cybersecurity episodes with CyberQueen. If we look at the technology landscape today, almost all organizations use some form of cloud computing. And with good reason. Organizations are attracted by the promise of scalability, efficiency, and innovation. In fact, recent studies show that over 90% of businesses are now using cloud services in some form. This shows the cloud's integral role in the modern business. The primary attraction of the cloud lies in its flexibility, cost savings, and the ability to increase the accessibility to technology, really allowing businesses of all sizes to compete on a global scale. But this transition poses an important question. Is the cloud secure? Now, while cloud platforms like Microsoft Azure offer strong security measures, the shared responsibility model of cloud security emphasizes that security is not just the job of the cloud provider. The organization has an immense responsibility to secure their own use of cloud computing as well. Hi, I'm Venetia, the founder of CyberQueen, a cloud security architect and a Microsoft MVP. And together with also, we bring you cybersecurity insights packed with the latest news and diverse perspectives. So don't forget to check out the also cloud marketplace for more insights. Now let's dive into the first steps and configuration that small and medium sized businesses should consider when it comes to securing their presence in the cloud effectively. First, let's talk about the shared responsibility model in cloud security. The cloud's shared responsibility model is important to be aware of and to understand. It is the responsibility of the cloud provider to secure the cloud infrastructure layers, but it's the responsibility of the business to secure the rest. So this means depending on which cloud consumption model you use, securing the rest could mean managing the user access, protecting data and configuring different platform services securely. The shared responsibility model in the cloud is like a teamwork agreement between you and the cloud service provider, in this case, Microsoft Azure. Think of it as deciding who does what to keep everything safe. So in this team, the cloud provider like Azure makes sure that the cloud itself is secure. This includes taking care of the buildings, the servers, and the software that run on these cloud services. And on your side, you're in charge of keeping keeping your data, apps, and how people access the cloud safe. This means that you need to look after your passwords. You need to protect your information. You need to decide who gets to see what in your cloud environment. Now let's look at this model a little bit more graphically. This really shows what parts you as a business need to take care of and what parts the cloud provider, AKA Microsoft would handle. In this case, the areas in blue are always your responsibility. So information and data, no matter what service you use, whether it is infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or software as a service, or your on-premise servers, you're always in charge of securing your data. Now, this means keeping it safe and deciding who can see or change it, and also protecting it from any data Data leaks or any data theft. Next up is the devices. So in this case, think mobiles and PCs. So you need to protect the devices that access the cloud, whether it's in your office or in your pocket. This includes using passwords, keeping software updated and making sure lost or stolen devices can't give away any of your business secrets. When it comes to accounts and identities, your user accounts and how people sign in and prove who they are is always up to you. So this involves creating strong passwords, using multi-factor authentication, and making sure that old employees cannot get back into your systems. Now the areas in gray are always the responsibility of the cloud provider. So this is physical hosts, network and data center. So the cloud provider takes care of the actual buildings and hardware that run the cloud, keeping the servers secure, making sure that the buildings are guarded and that the hardware is running smoothly. You don't need to worry about fixing servers or guarding the data center. That entire process is on them. 
then some of the responsibilities may vary depending on which service model you use. So these are the striped areas. For infrastructure as a service, you're like a tenant renting a space. In this case, the space is servers and storage. Now you control the interior of what's happening in your space, like your operating systems, your applications, your network controls. But Azure maintains the overall building. With platform as a service, this is more like renting an office where the furniture is already provided. So you bring your business and Azure gives you more, like they give you a managed database service, and you really have to just use the service and you manage way less. Now, when we're looking at software as a service, this is a fully managed service, right? So think of this as a subscription like Netflix. You just use the service like Microsoft 365 and Microsoft takes care of pretty much everything from the software to the infrastructure that this runs on. Now, it's important to stress that in all cases, no matter how much Microsoft does, you have to look after your data and who has access to it. That part does not change. Okay, let's take a moment to circle back to the big question here. So is the cloud inherently secure? Well, only if you decide to use the secure capabilities that's available to you. If you don't enable the security controls for the services that you use, then your cloud environments will be exposed and they will be vulnerable to threats. So exactly which security controls should you implement? Now, to help you decide, we can look at a specific matrix. For example, the cloud capability matrix. So in this case, with relevance to Azure, this will provide you with like a security checklist. It helps you to understand what security tools are available and which ones you should turn on for your specific requirements. Now, it's important because it shows exactly which security tasks Azure can take care of and which tasks you need to handle. For example, in a shared responsibility model, Azure ensures that the physical servers in the cloud infrastructure is secure. So think of this as like the cloud's security guards, making sure that the building is secure. But it's up to you to make sure that you secure your data, your applications, and your networks should also be safe. This might include setting strong passwords, controlling who can access your data, and then protecting the applications that sit inside of that cloud space and securing the network level access to those applications. The cloud capability matrix guides you to specific security capabilities that can help you to do your part. So this could mean using Azure's identity and access management services to check whether the right people are getting into the right systems. It could be turning on data encryption to keep the information secure, etc. So in essence, the matrix is a way for businesses to know which controls are key and which controls should be enabled. It takes away the guesswork and it gives you a clear path to follow for securing your part of the cloud. So imagine it like having a security roadmap that's specifically customized to your needs, making sure that you use Azure security features to the maximum. Now let's talk a bit about keeping your business safe in the cloud, specifically with Azure. There are a few easy to use capabilities that are seamless to enable and help to protect your business. First off, let's look at managing access. With using the identity and access management capabilities, Entra ID and multi-factor authentication help you to manage who has access to your resources and how those who have access can use your resources. This is like a bouncer for your online club deciding who can come in and who can't. It's like double checking the IDs at the door. So this helps to make sure that only the right people can reach your stuff. Then when it comes to protecting your information, there are data protection capabilities, there's the capabilities to encrypt sensitive data both at rest and in transit to really make sure that it's secure. And in this case you can think of it like wrapping your important data into a little digital safe. So 
it's secure. Whether it's just sitting there or if you are trying to get it somewhere else, it is secure in the process. For network security, using firewalls and network security groups to control the flow of information and really protect your systems and your applications against unauthorized access. So in this case, imagine putting up fences and gates on the internet. Network security controls help to control who can send stuff to you and who you can send stuff to. When it comes to protecting your web applications, application security is really, really important. So in this case, you can use a WAF, a web application firewall. So if your business has a website or an application, you can protect it from cyber criminals and other online troublemakers by deploying a web application firewall within Azure. And finally, you have to keep an eye out. You have to have visibility. So in this case, you can use monitoring and response, which is the core fundamental when it comes to cloud security. So with deploying the cloud security services, you can enable diagnostic settings to give you visibility over your cloud space. And this can provide you with different kinds of alerts for anything fishy that's going on inside of your cloud space so that you can be aware and you can handle it fast. For each of these, Azure has a tool or service that's part of a bigger picture or a bigger map, showing you exactly what you need to protect with your part of the cloud. For small businesses, this map makes it simple to figure out what security stuff you need to turn on and manage so you can work confidently in the cloud knowing that you are covered. In wrapping up today's episode, we've unpacked the basic steps for securing your businesses in the cloud with Azure security features. We've seen how a partnership approach through the shared responsibility model helps to ensure that while Microsoft secures the cloud, you protect your data and your access to it. It's a balance of using Azure's security tools and your own vigilance. And as you continue to embrace cloud computing, understanding and activating these security features is really important for protecting your digital assets. The cloud capability matrix serves as your guide, helping you to navigate Azure security landscape and making sure that your cloud journey is both secure and compliant. Now, definitely make sure you stay tuned for our next episode where we will talk about securing Azure infrastructure and cloud native security services. We'll dive deep into Defender for Cloud and how CSVM, Cloud Security Posture Management, can streamline your cloud security posture initiatives. And of course, we have to have to talk about the advanced capabilities of Microsoft Sentinel. Definitely make sure you check out the Also Cloud Marketplace for a lot more information on all of these platforms, tools, insights, capabilities that we discussed today. And as always, thank you for watching. Stay vigilant and stay secure.